Hello, I'm Igor Kule, welcoming you to the next edition of the Eastern Europe Review, the program that talks about countries east of Poland, mainly Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. This is a common project of Belsa TV and TVP World, and now let's look at today's headlines. How does the Lukashenko regime use repressions towards the relatives of the Kalinowski regiment fighters? The regime's days are numbered. That's why they are worried. They feel it, and the regime feels it. Who stands behind the protests in Moldova? This is not breaking news. Russia is waging a hybrid war. A story of the famous Ukrainian soldier whose last words were glory to Ukraine, told by his mother and son. I saw that he died like a hero. They did not break him. The Lukashenko regime is looking for ways of forcing the Belarusian volunteers to stop fighting on the side of Ukraine. The Belarusian Ministry of Internal Affairs stated that they have started to conduct activities related to the families and friends of volunteers. In practice, this means raids, threats and prosecution. If Ukraine wins the war, the Kalinovsky regiment, the most famous and numerous military formation of Belarusians in Ukraine, may pose a direct threat to the Belarusian regime and personally to dictator Lukashenko. They are making plans to destabilize the situation in Belarus. This is Andrei Ananenka, head of the Lukashenko regime political police, describing the activities of the Kastus Kalinowski regiment, the largest and most significant military formation of Belarusians in Ukraine, according to the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Since the beginning of 2022, 11 people have been prosecuted for trying to leave the country to join the military or organization in Ukraine. We would like to remind you that all connections of Belarusian mercenaries fighting on the territory of Ukraine as part of illegal armed formations are traced. There is an ongoing systematic investigation of activities carried out within the country and assistance offered to foreign radical initiatives. All departments of the Ministry of Internal Affairs continue to work on this matter. By systematic investigation, Ananenka means that the main directorate for combating organized crime and and corruption, which has the reputation for being the most cruel and ruthless among the security forces of Belarus, is raiding the relatives and friends of the Kalinowski regiment fighters. According to the security forces, they seem to be put together in secret cells. The searches and arrests of relatives of the Kalinowski regiment fighters, if this information is true, coincides with another wave of raids across the country. It began after a Russian A-50U plane, which coordinated missile attacks on Ukraine, was damaged by explosives dropped by drones right at the Machulishchi military airfield near Minsk. According to experts, the actions taken specifically against the soldiers of Kalinowski regiment can be caused by the fact that Lukashenko fears them as a structure that could destroy the regime in the future. The Kalinowski regiment poses a threat as a practical military unit to the authorities, but they also realize that at a certain moment there may be many more soldiers, and the regiment may grow and reach a completely different scale. Indeed, Lukashenko quite often mentions Belarusian fighters in Ukraine during his meetings. For example, last year in October, he stated that the regiment set itself the goal of destabilizing the situation in Belarus through diversionary and subversive activities. And this year in January, he said the following. All these Kalinozzi, members of other banners and others, will answer not just in court, there will be only one conversation with them to exterminate. The Kalinowski regiment itself has no information about the fact that security forces visited the relatives of any of the military unit fighters, so the authorities in Minsk may be spreading such news for the sake of intimidation. Most of those who fight in the regiment hide their affiliation with it and act undercover, using call signs for security reasons. Some don't even tell their families that they are soldiers at war. 
This is the usual work of the punitive authorities, because they are afraid of us. It's a sign of quality for us that we are doing the right thing. And their actions do not affect our determination to continue doing what we do in any way. The regime's days are numbered, that's why they are worried. They feel it, and the regime feels it. Political observer Vital Tsigankou believes that the regime itself will be affected by the increasing pressure it exerts. These repressions cause, to put it mildly, indifference to the actions of the government. Or rather, they boost the desire to take revenge, to respond, to achieve justice. If the actions of the government were softer, this desire wouldn't be so burning. But the current repression sharpens this desire, and in a certain sense, it makes revenge inevitable. On March the 9th, the Kastus Kalinowski Regiment celebrated the anniversary of its formation. Because of the fact that the military unit had been created, the regime opened a criminal case and recognized the regiment as an extremist formation. At the same time, certain political circles in Ukraine are ready to perceive Kalinowski as legitimate representatives of democratic Belarus at future negotiations. Russia plans to take over Moldova, applying the Belarus scenario. Journalists got access to Russia's plan to make Moldova completely dependent on the Kremlin. According to them, it was developed two years ago, and one of its strategic goals is to make Moldova enter the military bloc with Russia. The Kremlin also plans to increase the influence of the Russian language among Moldovians. Is it true that Russia is planning to seize Moldova and how the protests in the country are connected with the Kremlin? We are the people. Slay Maya Sandu. Such slogans have been heard on the streets of Chisinau for half a year. Every weekend, hundreds and even thousands of people from the capital and other cities take part in protests. They express dissatisfaction with rising food prices and high tariffs for gas and electricity. If we want a better life, the government must go. My friend has a pension of 100 euros per month. But the gas bill alone is 75 euros. How to live in it? The Moldovan authorities believe that the Kremlin is behind these protests. Its goal is to change the government in the country. Russia's plan to take subversive actions on the territory of our state is not new. They intend to use saboteurs with military training dressed in civilian clothes. They may attack some government buildings and take hostages. The Russians will stage all this as opposition protests, and the change of power in Chisinau will be forced. Moscow's plans are no longer a secret, says the former defense minister of Moldova, and he mentions that the current crisis could have been artificially provoked. The fact that Russia now wants to overthrow the government is not new. I have been talking about this personally since last year, since August. I said that protests would start in Chisinau in the fall and that the reason would be an increase in energy prices. Moldova is really experiencing a severe energy crisis. Last year, the price of gas for consumers increased almost seven times. If in Moldova they pay more than $1.5 for one cubic meter of gas, for the residents of Transnistria, by comparison, the same amount costs five cents. According to a consortium of journalists, Moscow plans to create the pro-Russian sentiment among the Moldovan elite by 2025. This is not breaking news. Russia is waging a hybrid war. But in 2021, they updated their plan for destabilization and for the occupation of Moldova. After the start of the war, their priority was the military occupation of Moldova. But thanks to the Ukrainian military and the West, this did not happen. Now they have moved to a semi-peaceful scenario. They want to gather hundreds of thousands of people in the square in Chisinau to paralyze the city, to paralyze state structures. According to the Moldovan authorities, pro-Russian rallies are organized by the opposition party Shor. Its leader, businessman and a husband of a famous Russian singer Jasmine Ilan Shor, fled to Israel in 2019. In Moldova, the politician was found guilty of embezzling a billion dollars from banks. 
In addition, he is under U.S. sanctions. The Moldovan investigative journalists have discovered that it was the shore party that paid for the travel of the demonstrators who are also paid for participating in protests. The protest? We joined the people from Orhe and came here to protest. After that, we received money for being protesters. We received 400 lei. It's about 20 euros. Moscow is not hiding its interest in Moldova. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that Sandu's attacks are an attempt to divert people's attention from the failure in social and economic spheres. In his opinion, the West is turning Moldova to be anti-Russian and is considering the path of a new Ukraine for it. Now Moldova is being considered as a new anti-Russia, primarily because they were able to put a president as the head of the country, which is simply eager to join NATO, by quite specific methods, far from being free democratic. She has Romanian citizenship. She is ready to unite with Romania, and in general, she is ready for almost anything. Obviously, such rhetoric from the Kremlin is a matter of strong concern for Moldova, because Transnistria, a self-proclaimed republic controlled by Russia, is located in its territory. And now, after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the republic has every reason to believe that Moldova will be next in line if Russia is not stopped in Ukraine. The mother and the son of the executed Ukrainian soldier Alexander Matievsky informed that they are ready to file a lawsuit against Russia. Before joining the armed forces, Alexander lived in Moldova. The man had dual citizenship and in 2001 he went to rebuild a Russian city after a flood. Twenty years later, the Russians killed him just because of the three words Glory to Ukraine. He can no longer do anything but that look in his eyes. He no longer has a weapon and he remains steadfast even when he faced death. He used to tell me, if there's a grenade, I'll take it with me. I'll go, but I will take it with me. He would never surrender. This footage with a soldier instantly went viral on the internet. After having said the slogan, Glory to Ukraine, in captivity, the sniper of the 163rd Battalion of the 119th Separate Brigade of the Chernihiv TRO, Territorial Defense Forces, Alexander Matsievsky, was shot at point-blank range by the Russian military. I recognized them by all the signs, the clothes, the scars, the birthmarks, two bullet holes on this side, two on that side, right here, and they shot him in the head too. Despite the fact of being identified by relatives, the security service of Ukraine carried out a set of investigative actions to finally establish the soldier's identity. As a result, a forensic portrait examination confirmed that the soldier in the video was Alexander Matsievsky. A pre-trial investigation under the article on violation of laws and customs of war is currently underway. The security service is also trying to establish the identity of the Russian soldiers who shot the Ukrainian prisoner of war. I wanted to know how my son died. It was hard, but I could take it. And then the video came up. I saw that he died like a hero. They did not break him. Alexander Matsievsky was born in Chisinau and was a citizen of the Republic of Moldova, where he attended high school and graduated from an electrical engineering college. In May 2001, Alexander went to Russia to rebuild the town of Lensk in Yakutia. When Lensk in Yakutia was flooded, the water was up to the third floor, and people from all of the former Soviet republics went to help to rebuild the city. Sasha was very young when he was rebuilding the city in Russia, and now the Russian soldiers killed him. Alexander met his future wife Yulia in Lensk, and it is there where their son Mikhailo was born. Now the man lives in Europe. We had a video call with him. Seeing my father's death was very hard. There are no words to express my emotions. I wish those who murdered my dad would endure the worst torment possible. Will you sue the Russian Federation over the murder of your father? I think so, but I don't think that much depends on me. 
The local authorities in Nizhen, in cooperation with Alexander's family, will decide how to commemorate the soldier in their city. The president of Ukraine awarded the deceased sniper the title of Hero of Ukraine posthumously. And that's it for today. The Eastern Europe Review will be back next Sunday. Keep watching TVP World and stand with Ukraine.